As the target launch date of SpaceX's fourth Starship test flight draws near, final preparations are underway. One final wet dress rehearsal is performed, equipment is moved to safe locations, flight termination systems are readied, and excitement is in the air. Now let's dig into this week's update. With the target date for the fourth integrated flight test just days away, work at the launch complex transitions to site cleanup, starting with the removal of one of the vertical cryo tank load spreaders. The sixth module of the second orbital launch integration tower was brought from the Port of Brownsville to the Sanchez site to wait along with the other modules that have been staged for transport and stacking at the launch site. Meanwhile, the booster transport stand and Raptor installation platform departed the launch complex. The installation stand also made a short trip to the payload processing facility grounds for storage while the booster stand made the longer journey to Sanchez. We also see concrete being placed in the current work areas for the Star Factory expansion, likely expanding the factory's work floor. Back at the launch site, workers began installing the missing heat shield tiles on Starship 29, which protect the ship's hull from the intense heat of re-entry. According to a recent post from Elon Musk, Starship is not resilient against the loss of a heat shield tile, so it's paramount that they remain in place during flight. Still, crews were able to work quickly moving onto the flaps after completing tile installation on the ship's body in about two hours. Disassembly of the suborbital tank farm entered its final stages with the removal of the few remaining tanks at the site, starting with the compressed gas storage tank. The years at the pad and the crews demolishing the area were not kind to the tank, leaving it battered, cut open, and bound for the scrapyard. After the compressed gas tank was removed, the two Grove cranes prepared for a tandem lift of the final hot dog style propellant storage tank. Once everything was ready, the cranes picked up and placed the tank on a transporter for removal from the site. Starship 26 underwent cryoloading at the Massey outpost, putting the testing infrastructure through its paces for the first time and qualifying the test site for a future flight bound ships. The horizontal storage tank at the suborbital complex began to move towards the launch site gate, pausing at the entrance before heading back and being parked elsewhere at the site. A convoy of trucks escorted an SPMT to the launch site to pick up and remove the spare ship transport stand that was stored next to the former test stand A for the last few months. The SPMT and stand were back on the road shortly after midnight and crews brought the stand down Highway 4 to the Sanchez site for storage. Two more self-propelled modular transporters headed for the launch complex after sunrise as work continues to prepare for Flight 4. At the launch pad, teams of workers on boom lifts began dismantling the scaffolding on the orbital launch mount. With all the tanks removed from the suborbital launch site, crews began to prepare SpaceX's heavy lift GMK-7550 crane to leave the launch site, starting with the removal of the counterweight blocks. Next, the boom wings were folded in and stowed. The boom was then elevated a bit and the counterweight tray was removed, placed on an SPMT and brought out of the launch site. With the crane reconfigured for road transport now, it departed the launch complex and headed back up towards the build site. Ongoing propellant deliveries at the launch complex hit a snag when a CH-4 tanker got stuck in the mud on the side of the road. Luckily, a bulldozer was quickly brought in and was able to pull the tanker free. Transport arrangements for the suborbital site's horizontal storage tank were finished, and the tank departed the launch complex, heading down Highway 4 and left Starbase for parts unknown. Late in the evening, a pair of SPMTs arrived at the launch complex, set themselves up under Starship 29, and moved the ship between the chopsticks for stacking. The chopsticks were raised around the ship, pausing underneath the flaps before being slowly brought up and connected to the ship's load points. The Starship temporary pressurization plate was disconnected from Starship 29 on Sunday, and lifting operations began a couple of hours later. The ship was slowly lifted and rotated into place above Booster 11, revealing a handful of absent tiles at the base of the skirt. With the ship hovering above the booster, the chopsticks made a fine adjustment to its position before setting it down and completing the vehicle stack. SpaceX's LR-11000 was prepared to move one final section of vertical tanks ahead of Flight 4 as it picked up the 12-meter load spreader and lowered it back down into the tank area. 
The bottom section of the cryo shell was lifted out of the farm grounds on Monday and set down in the scrapping area. The LR-11000 then set down the load spreader and raised its hook to its resting position. A detonation suppression system test was conducted on the orbital launch mount as work began to validate the pad systems ahead of a wet dress rehearsal. A low volume and short duration deluge systems test followed suit under the orbital launch mount using as little water as we've ever seen to check the system. Booster 11's Raptor engines then tested their igniters to ensure the engines will be ready to start on launch day. After performing the deluge test, trucks arrived to replenish the systems with fresh water. The detonation suppression system on the orbital launch mount was tested for a second time this week, flooding the area with inert gases in the pre-dawn hours of Tuesday morning ahead of the day's wet dress rehearsal. The chopsticks were detached from Ship 29, lowered down and opened into their launch position. The wet dress rehearsal began in earnest at 9 a.m. The Starship and Super Heavy were loaded with liquid methane and oxygen about 33 minutes, mirroring the loading time for Flight 3. While the stack sat with its propellant load, the detonation suppression system was given a full test on the orbital launch mount. The ship and booster were later detanked and the propellant sent back to the storage tanks. A full power deluge system test was performed under the orbital launch mount about an hour later. With the ship and booster emptied out and the pad systems verified, testing was complete for the day and the chopsticks were raised and closed around ship 29. Construction workers wasted no time and got right back to work after the roads were reopened. A concrete pump truck was soon set up at the former suborbital tank farm, placing concrete for a slip layer under the second orbital launch integration tower's foundation. Even with the launch rehearsal complete, crews continue to test the Starship, actuating Ship 29's flaps to make sure they're ready for the critical re-entry phase of the flight. Early on Wednesday morning, a ship stand was placed near the orbital launch mount for destacking. The final destack is needed to arm Starship's flight termination system, which is only performed a few days before launch. Construction of the multi-level parking garage is nearing completion now, and all major concrete components are in place. The two cranes used to build the garage moved to the staging area at Sanchez, and one crane's boom was laid down for dismantling. Workers at the build site then began reconfiguring the wall outside Star Factory with forklifts, widening the area available for traffic now that the space is no longer needed for construction work. A convoy of trucks delivered the components for a new LTR-1220 crawler crane to the launch complex. This crane may be used to assemble the second launch tower's construction crane when it arrives. Meanwhile, at the launch pad, Ship 29 was de-stacked from Booster 11 and was set down on the ship's stand for its final pre-launch preparations, including the installation of explosive charges into the flight termination system. With the vehicle now de-stacked, the ship quick disconnect arm soon swung back into place on the tower. Using a lift, workers installed a hoist above one of Booster 11's chines, allowing them to remove the covers and access to the systems inside. A set of crane outriggers were then delivered to the launch site, likely to be used for the LR-11000's laydown ahead of the launch. A section of Booster 11's chine was taken off over one of the booster's composite overwrap pressure vessels. The chines contained the subsystems needed for engine relights and engine bay inert gas purges. The chopsticks were then lowered to the hard stop points at the base of the launch tower and Booster 29 was moved out of the way for pre-flight work. On Thursday morning, test article B14.1 was brought to the Massey outpost. This subscale booster tank is expected to validate the booster structure for catch loads. The LR-11000 left its spot at the launch site in the morning and headed towards the flat area near the former suborbital launch and test pads for lay down ahead of launch. While Ship 29 waited for its flight termination system charges, the explosive package for Booster 11 was installed in the vehicle. Workers then began removing liquid nitrogen handling equipment from the launch site, starting with a vaporizer system, which was loaded on a truck and removed from Starbase. While the nitrogen system removal was underway, Starship 29's flight termination system was loaded with explosives. The two independent flight termination systems were loaded with tandem charges designed to destroy the vehicle if commanded. 
Following the departure of the vaporizer, liquid nitrogen pumps were removed from the site and shipped out. Two pumps were removed in total as they were no longer necessary due to the reconfigured propellant chilling and handling methods at the launch site. SpaceX's LR-11000 was relocated again, negotiating the active construction zone at the site of the second tower for a better laydown position. Crews began dismantling the retired runs of plumbing at the orbital tank farm as trucks continue to come and go at the launch complex. This week at the Cape, Doug returned to port on Friday with both fairing halves from the Starlink Group 6-62 mission. Also from Starlink Group 6-62, Signet Warhorse 1 returned with a short fall of Gravitas and Falcon 9 Booster 1080 a few hours later. After a short stay at the port, Falcon 9 Booster 1080 was lifted on the dockside stand, freeing up a short fall of Gravitas for its next mission. Signet Warhorse 1 then towed the drone ship out to sea early on Saturday morning for the Starlink Group 6-60 mission. Then six hours later, Doug also headed out to sea in support of that same mission. Bob returned to Port Canaveral on Monday, bringing in Just Read the Instructions, two fairing halves, and Falcon 9 Booster 1077 for refurbishment and reuse. Falcon 9 Booster 1080 was laid onto a self-propelled modular transporter on Tuesday, ready to depart for Hangar X at Roberts Road for refurbishment. A short time later, Falcon 9 Booster 1078 lifted off in its 10th flight, launching the Starlink Group 6-60 mission into low Earth orbit. With Booster 1080 out of the docks now, Falcon 9 Booster 1077 was lifted off of Just Read the Instructions and set down on the dockside stand following its 13th successful mission. Signet Warhorse 1 returned to port on Thursday, bringing a short fall of Gravitas and Falcon 9 Booster 1078 for their next round of mission preparations. Doug then returned to port late in the evening with the fairing halves from the Starlink Group 6-60 mission. Keeping up with a blistering pace, Falcon 9 Booster 1078 was offloaded from a short fall of Gravitas and placed onto the dockside stand. Signet Warhorse 1 headed back out after just four hours in port, once again towing a short fall of Gravitas out to sea to support its next mission, Starlink Group 6-64. Doug then headed out to sea as well a few minutes later. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. We're hoping for a June 6 launch, guys, so we'll see you then. Lab Padre, out.